Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice episode 3 billion and 25. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these, but something just sort of caught my attention, uh, a comment left on our YouTube channel. Uh, before I do that as well, uh, remember that we are we like to have questions, interesting things that we can talk about for the reptile advice that come up maybe as issues. So um, we, we generally only accept them on the YouTube channel, but by all means enter the community there, uh, subscribe to our channel and you can leave maybe some questions you'd maybe like to see answered. If it's requests for specific species, we have no control over that, it's what comes in store. So uh, once it arrives, I'm sure that we'll get around to doing a stock stock uh, video on it and a, 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 a species guide, but until it arrives, we've got no control over it. So, uh, the comment that was left by was by Prehistoric19. I really wish this starter snake trend, starter snake trend, came to an end. And what I mean by that is most people will recommend corns and royals, mostly as your first snake. A lot of spe people don't seem to understand that they should really just get what they really want. It's a shame, really. Um... Okay, so part of that I agree with and part of it I flat reject. The part that I agree with is people just rec recommend corns and royals to the exception of everything else. The primary driver of our channel when we decided to start it was that there was a multitude of other genus and species that could be kept equally uh, as easily as corns and royals. They're probably easier than royals. royals. Royals are at the upper end because of where they're from, the tropical needs. But things like bull pine, gopher snakes, garter snakes, African house snakes. Uh, th there, there is a litany of different species that are available that used to be commonplace that no longer are because everybody started breeding corns and royals to the exception of everything else. Diversified collections were broken up to buy new morphs of corns and royals and we have now ended up in a diversity problem with species within the hobby and this is why we're seeing things like the the big bubble for the mexican black kings which is a bubble they're not going to stay at that value forever because they're easy to breed so they'll be expensive for five minutes and then they'll be everywhere again and return back down to their normal price where i flat disagree is that people should just be able to keep what they want regardless of experience I think that's dangerous and in store we have difficulty levels displayed beginner intermediate and advanced on the website we have difficulty levels uh, listed beginner intermediate and advanced and on the YouTube series that we do we have introducing intermediate and advanced and the idea here is to benefit the animal not benefit the keeper the keeper's the last thing on our mind when we came up with this this system of, of ranking them. How do we rank them? 75 years experience between me and Paul and we've decided that that's the way that we're going to do it. It's based on a multitude of different variables, whether that's temperament, territoriality, adult size, willingness to feed. So, you know, the, the, these, these checkpoints that we go through. Um, and, you know, it, part of it feels like there's an entitlement of the keeper to not be told no and to pout because somebody says, you're not ready for it. Don't do it. Why do you want a green anaconda? And they don't understand that actually that challenge to them, if it's able to put them off, they were never supposed to have it in the first place. Pouting about it after is just childish. See, the thing is, you, you can go like, we, I've been to a track day, a Ferrari open day, and people with money buy stupidly fast cars they have the money to buy stupidly fast cars they may have even watched a few advanced driving guide videos but invariably they spin out because they don't know how to drive a fast car guns you know that that you there are basic weapons and then there are advanced weapons you don't just pick up a bren gun and decide that you're going to take the world on it doesn't work like that Oh, tonight, love, what we're having? We're having puffer fish, darling. Bit of fugu. Don't worry. I've read the instructions. I've done the research. And I've watched his YouTube channel. And I think I've got it sussed. Let's imagine how that would end. 
And then, in a previous life, before I was fat and broken, I was a martial artist, and I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I coached Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And we had a belt system, and the belt system was there as also a recognition of time served within um, the, the art and how adept you were at the art. What it also do, did was act as certain moves would be introduced as we accrued experience for the simple reason that, well, for lack of a better way of putting it, and it's not a very nice term, but the white belt spaz out. That's what they used to say within Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or BJJ circles. So a white belt spazzing out could cost you a wrist, an elbow, an arm, a knee because they don't know the way that joints work. They don't know how much resistance they can take. They don't know how much pressure to apply and... That's why we removed certain moves from them. So upon achieving a blue belt, they could do a straight back ankle lock. Uh, from purple belt, they got their wrist locks. And from brown belt, they got knee bars. Each of these generally accruing a far level of greater damage to a joint if uh, applied and not released expediently when a tap comes or if they were cranked on or yanked on, then we're talking about serious injuries where people would be hospitalized. And it is for the safety of your companion, not you. The same way that the levels are for the safety of the animal and not you. You can read the theory. We had a mate uh, called Dave who had an eidetic memory who basically could read any book and recite any amount of text that he'd read. LD50 numbers, this, that and the other. But when it came to the practical application of this knowledge, he was shite and killed nearly everything. So being able to... Um, read and be able to accrue knowledge in a th theoretical sense is great and it's part of it but there is a practical rite of passage that one has to go through that also prepares you with a skill set to be able to handle animals that potentially have slightly more nuanced humidity requirements or environmental requirements there's no judgment upon the keeper and many keepers have got zero interest in keep moving on to intermediate or advanced level snakes or the specialised prey that they might require. And they're quite happily just sat in that introducing section because, let's face it, I mean, a, a website that we're putting together now has got 82 species listed currently just for the introducing snakes section. 82 species, not just corns and royals. So on that point, I agree completely. And the fact that I think we're up on the introducing series, what are we up to? Episode 40 something. So there isn't this, this limitation. Far from it. There's far more choice than you think. But equally, there's a responsibility of novice keepers or inexperienced keepers thinking that we can just keep whatever we want because, well, I want to keep it. Well, you're not ready to keep it. Well, I am ready to keep it. And I'm going to stamp my feet and shout about it until you let me keep it. It doesn't work like that. It's not primary school. And such as shops that are, try to be responsible, like me and Paul at Snakes and Adders, if we say no, it's not because we don't like you. It's because we just don't think you're ready. There's no beef intended. It just is what it is. Um, we try and be straight, just straight talking and straight down the line and... Why piss about? It's an animal at the end of the day. You've got to look after it and do right by it. And if we think we're doing right by it by saying no, then that's it. End of conversation. Um, there are people who think that you should just be able to keep what you want. I've seen the arguments done. I disagree. I think you're wrong. Um, you're welcome to make your own videos on your own channels to argue otherwise. But that's our stance on it. That's why we've got the difficulty levels. And uh, we will continue to do so because we want to... Uh, safeguard the animals so we'll see you again soon cheers guys bye